Rugby, his golf rugby report, one of the premier sources when it comes to rugby news. So we thank him for broadcasting this weekend and keeping up with the updates. We know Jackie Finland with the breakdown as well has done a wonderful preview of all the girls teams in action. I was actually able to draw a lot of info for, from her as well as interviewing the team. So thanks to Jackie, I, I borrowed some of your research as well. <laughs> uh, but so the breakdown will be posting girls girls updates exclusively. Uh, you know, the breakdown focuses on the game of women's rugby and girls rugby. Um, they did a great piece too, looking at our Rio 2016 Olympic team and looking at where these athletes were five years ago when they were these girls' ages. So we had Eagles like uh, Catherine Johnson and Joanne Favessi that were playing uh, in the Nations Cup, which was the predecessor to the Super Series, uh, playing for the USA U19 team, kind of making their way up the pathway. This Atlantis team has been a huge part of the USA rugby pathway, as is Adam. Oh, wow, look at that speed. And we see this right Great away. Stride. Wow, that's great. Great ball movement, great speed on the edge. That is a fantastic breakaway. That's Atlantis wearing their Roman numerals going back. This program was founded in 1986 and like kind of the myth of Atlantis. Amel Cygnus. It's making us think a little bit, yeah, when we look at the numbers. Yep. <laughs> But uh, the, the emperor of rugby, Emil Cygnus, founding this team. He is out here this weekend. Coach, consultant, director of rugby, the man responsible for the game getting into the Olympics, if we're going to call him anything here. Bit of a rematch from this morning, our first game with the, with the boys. It was. It was earlier today. Great yeah, point. Our it first was game was out of us, Atlantis, and now it's kind of switched the gender role here. We're looking at the women's team and or the girls team, Atavis and, and, and uh, Atlantis. Yep, and that was Ariana Ramsey from Atlantis with the try, converted, I believe, by Katie Rickenau. We'll see if I can get a confirmation there on some of the numbers. We have a few different rosters here, but got to see this out of his team training uh, two days ago. They're coached by Josie Zaluka, one of my friends in the great game of rugby. She's another of one that everyone would know. Really well. yeah, of course. Well, she's been on tour with the, the <laughs> Stars Rugby Sevens team that I run, came with us to Canada and uh, to Australia in 2014. She is an alumni of this Atlantis program, wow. too. She played um, club rugby with Nova out in uh, Northern Virginia, is currently with the San Diego Surfers, and she's one of those that she's played for every great coach there is. She she was in residency at the ARPTC too. So Josie's played under Dana Krieger with uh, Nova. She's played for Amel in Atlantis. She's played for Richie. This great, you know, American rugby tradition that is growing. And this is a great tradition wow, here too. This out of this Atlantis rivalry. Take it to the house. Try time. So this is number five from the out of his selects wearing blue. Kinnan, who works with Adivis too, that is a Kent alumna, one of several Kent players that have all uh, kind of moved on and played college rugby in the state of Washington. Um, so I know uh, Carly played at Washington State. A lot of these Adivis girls and a lot of the Kent girls I'm coming into out of the Central Washington program, coached by Mel Denham. There's a lot of Atlantis veterans as well, moving on to play college rugby all over the country. We've seen these Atlantis alumna uh, go on and play at schools. Lindenwood has a couple rep yeah, representatives here. Been doing great. Life University has a couple yeah. representatives here. The Atlantis coach, Kevin Corley, has actually accepted a position. He'll be assisting at Life University starting this fall of 2016. And uh, Billy Nicholas is out here, the coach of Lindenwood University. He has coached Atlantis both at the senior level and the high school Let's level as well. Let's get Billy in here. I think Billy's busy watching this game. He's got to focus and get his notes. Maybe we can get his thoughts after the match. Billy, if you're listening, come down to the, the media booth and give us. Oh, great counter ruck option. But this now, because of the hard shoot on the defense, is leaving an open opportunity. This is number five from Atlantis. She is a speedster. She had that break up the field what earlier in the game. What a burner. What a great. Great stride. So Lauren Buckles. Nope, sorry, this is number seven. My The same thing, that beautiful, long, easy strides. Yeah. So some of these players showing a little bit of a track background with solid running form. They've got the core strength to do it faster than I ever was. How's, how's this for East Coast? Wicked fast? <laughs> the wicked smart. Wicked smart. <laughs> Although, well, I, I, I know some of the California slang, but being on a family-friendly broadcast, we'll, we uh, we'll keep it. that in. <laughs> California's a lot more North Cal friends, I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So we see Atlantis take a lead here in the match, leading 12 to five early in the first half of play.
that this can be anyone's game. Atlantis and Atavis have faced off before in Las Vegas. These are teams that play a lot of rugby. These girls both experienced high school All-Americans. Um, you know, we've seen this uh, Atlantis program put many Eagles into the high school All-Americans as well as the college All-Americans. They actually had a couple of their players, Tess Fury being the most notable, Great get tackle. capped in the Super Series. And Atavis has no shortage of players as well, representing with the Eagles. They're going to have um, one of their players, Ryan Carlisle, is another one who's Richie Walker and Emily Bodwell. Emily, a multiple time capped uh, Eagles player herself, actually Canadian by birth, wow. but is going to be the team leader for our women's Eagles That's when they great. start playing Rio next week. That's great. Yeah, I'm really excited for the Olympics. I really can't wait to see what, how both our teams fare down there. I agree with you. And, uh, you know, we look ahead. There's going to be the Rugby World Cup hosted in San Francisco 2018, the Sevens World Cup, and then 2020 Tokyo Olympics. We're going to see some players from these teams. Do you know the, uh, the, uh, the pitch in San Francisco? I do not know for certain. I don't want to misspeak. I'm going to guess it's where that pro rugby team is playing. But I know Treasure Island up that way has hosted quite a bit, you know, Golden Gate right. Rugby. But it may well be at uh, the Giants Stadium. It could be AT&T Ballpark. I yeah, you know, they'd have to be looking for a venue that comedy, the influx of fans coming with the Rugby World Cupping in San Francisco. I think there's going to be a huge contingent coming from New Zealand, Samoa, Tonga, you know, coming over from, you know, Japan, depending what teams are qualifying for the World Cup too. But being on that western side of the USA, there's going to, of course, be fans from all over the world. But right. I think a huge huge population because Sacramento known for having you know quite a big Polynesian population there too this is Katie Rickenau good Karen dummy. here she Great is wearing strength. that number one for Atlantis good I'm sorry off. and Julie Fend off, good speed, and then and a the fifty fake meter break. The, yeah, fifty meter break, and a great, a great fend off in the try zone to get underneath the post. I mean, that's fantastic. Great awareness. So we talked again earlier today how these uh, girls' high school elite teams are playing around robin. So the points will matter when we look at the seating. The top two teams will advance to place in a in a final. It's fantastic opportunity. A lot of these teams talked about the fact that they came to this tournament for the experience of playing, to play teams from all around the country, to get you know more minutes on quality minutes in um, of course all these teams hoping to make it to the championships but you know looking for this experience of playing top level rugby here so it is atlantis off the post with the kick 17 to 5 with the lead here as the closing minutes of the first half wind down and we see here coach josie from atavis yelling at the players for their attacking shape there are so many different ways we can beat the player with ball in hand because we have Absolutely. the tools of our pass of our speed of our offloads we can play a longer, wider game, and we've got the kicks too, so they can create different shapes and different parts. And I know I was listening to some of their terminology and, and, and talking and, and using, you know, kind of like almost a Socratic method of question and answer with her players when she was in their training session two days ago. You know, why are we attacking this way or why would we choose this game plan? Right. I know this Utah team does the same thing. They've got many different styles of defense when we see the Utah Lions play too. So the game theory coming in at this young age for these players, this Atlantis team actually isn't the team that was meant to be here. Really? They have their starting seven plus one all at High School All-Americans this weekend wow. on the East Coast. Wow. So it's allowing a younger generation of Atlantis players to come. So now when they look ahead to Vegas next year, they can put two teams into the elite bracket. They're deep. I mean, they're deep. They've got some athletes. If, if this is, uh, they're not, not their first side, then I mean, they've, they've got some depth in this squad. It'll be exciting to watch them as they continue to grow. They absolutely do. And we see out here talking their uh, their halftime chat, head coach Kevin Corley wearing the white bucket hat. That's coach Amal Singman's wearing the green bucket hat. And then Biddy Bodwell in the USA rugby hat there. I think you might have uh, close to 150 years of rugby experience out there between those minds on the field. Of course, Kevin being the, the youngest inheritor here, he's uh, come up through the Morris rugby program where coach Tom Fury, who would often be with Atlantis or often be with a Northeast ODA team, is going to be coaching the girls of the Play Rugby USA team this weekend. And Kevin informed me that usually when Tom's away on trips, he's the one watching the house and minding the dogs. So this weekend, they have to find someone else to take his place, especially as Kevin.
play for Team Canada, to go play in a World Cup potentially someday, to play on the circuit. I mean, these athletes that's are going still, back to still back. still amazes me. It's playing a World Cup or, or, or even the Olympics. That's just, that's cool. Yep, and I'm gonna just take one minute here because Atlantis did me the favor. They've had over 80 women on the USA teams. The coaches that they've produced coming up through the program on the women's side alone, Julia McCoy, Jen Crawford, Liz Kirk, Joanne Ward-Koss, Krista McFerrin, Tracy Moens, Candy Orsini, Jan Rakowski, Kathy Flores, Sue Parker, who's currently the head coach at Harvard, which is one of our varsity programs, Kathy Flores as a, was at Brown, Katie Down. Olson, Liz Wilson, Emily Heinrich, Alex, De Alex DeMarco, Ali Ramage, Jody Loesch, Gia Ferguson Lewis, Brianna Whitfield, and I have to go to the back of my card because I have another <laughs> 20 names of girls. And some for star sevens in the plate final, or excuse me, the plate semifinal of the Las Vegas Invitational in the elite bracket there. Lily, 17 years old, training at the Olympic Training Center. Another young player, just like Rochelle Stevens, um, that deferred from Lindenwood. Uh, Rochelle was been full time at the Olympic Training Center as well. So Rochelle's made some appearances on the circuit uh, with the World Series. And then this out of his team, of course, of producing Eagles, like we said, Ryan Carlisle. A lot of their Eagles, or a lot of players playing in the USA Super Series. Out of us here with the line now. We'll see how they uh, react on the set piece here with the throw in. Really interested to see how they react here. Um, so maintaining they're, they're possession. possession. Yeah, absolutely. And with a game of sevens separate from 15s, we see the scrum half often throwing for lineouts because she's going to receive that ball off the top. With having less numbers, if they were to pack in, what would have. Half because she's already in motion, she's got a little bit of momentum. Of course, here we're looking at a, a a pass that most players feel more comfortable with going to the left side. Of course, it depends if you're right or left-handed, but these players are so skilled. They're going through. far you know across a gym to make sure they're getting their technique down and it's just a testament to the quality of coaching that they have i couldn't do that now no it's way. a <laughs> yeah it was a nice pass and an off, nice offload by julie rickenoff from atlantis here but it's atlantis getting the pressure on with a couple of tackles making it difficult Three tries, you know, but still anything's possible. We're still about five minutes left of rugby here in the second half of play. We'll see how Adibus reacts to this now, being down three tries. I mean, that will really, it'll really test their mental strength. And it is worth noting that this Adibus team traveled with 10 women, so they don't have their full roster of 12. Again, they're going to get a lot of minutes. Um, they are allowed with their substitutions now, a law that changed in the last year, to make any five player changes. It used to be that in the game of sevens, you were allowed, well, back in the day, you would have five subs, but you could only use three. Then they changed it to allow you can use all five subs. Now you can make any five changes, so you can bring a player off the field and back on again. We've affectionately termed it the Sonny Bill Williams rule, because <laughs> when Sonny Bill was making his transition, playing from rugby league to rugby and playing sevens, you know, he's a strong, powerful runner, a good ball carrier, but they were maybe a little bit concerned about his fitness compared to the traditional sevens athlete. So a nod to uh, some of the players that they're bringing in. With the, the 15s experience in rugby league, both coming onto these Olympic squads, putting the best athletes out on the field, just like we had Nate Ebner. From or kind of coined after you. I don't know that that's official, but that's how I refer to her. The Sunny Bill Law. Yeah, but it's good to see Nate Ebner back in the, on the seven squad. I mean, he's, he's a tremendous athlete, and I'm glad the Patriots were able to release him. Yeah, play. I mean, and Nate's a player that was no stranger to rugby. He actually grew up playing rugby, uh, grew up, you know, he played at Ohio State. So it's, it's not uh, as strange of a conversion as some other players may be. Because on our women's side, we have players that have come to the Olympic squad. Jessica Javale played field hockey and professional football before coming to the sport of rugby. We had uh, Olive Kelter played both soccer and ice hockey in Wisconsin, from what I can recall. And then we got players uh, that have come from USA bobsled. And so they've used these crossover camps.
I loved no, having I basketball too. players. Yeah, me too. I, I recruit those all the time when I was coaching at collegiate level. Yep, and then, you know, especially with the girls too, these soccer players making quite an impact. But now we've, we've had girls, you know, they've said, you know, yeah, we play soccer, we play lacrosse, but we love the sport of rugby. And you have to if you're coming out and using your summer vacation to come out here in Utah and play extra rugby. And then, you know, a lot of these players will be at the Girls High School All-Americans West Camp, you know, given that this Advis team is largely West Coast based, Atlanta's largely East Coast. So a lot of these Atlantis players uh, that would East normally be on the field for them, a lot of them that played in Atlanta Sevens when they won the tournament, they uh, they beat the Scion Academy in the final out there. 11 of those 12 girls are involved in other things this weekend. Wow. So that really did allow them to reload. Oh, look at that. Look a beautiful that. break by Adivis. Good ball movement, getting it to that far side to the outside, taking the corner. So she's trying to uh, to pull her defender out and get a better angle coming in on the field. It's making it a harder tackle for her defender. She does it well, scores in the corner. So that's the second try for the Advis side. We got some tired legs though. <laughs> well, she can we take her full time legs. on the kick here. Or make Absolutely. sure her teammates take the full time on the kick. Now, you know, can you we've got so much time. We've got a minute and a half. For the kick? No, that's 15s. That's 15s. You can't have a minute and a half out of a seven minute half. <laughs> oh, you're right, but, you know, you're right, that'd you're be right. quite some time. What, what is uh, it? Uh, it was 40 seconds, and I think that they they narrowed it down to 30 just this year. That was one of the year? recent law changes. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the law changes that they have some variations that they experiment with. We saw the Junior World Trophy with the boys at the U20 level play in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Tries were with six points. You know, They've I been didn't trying catch that out. That. Yeah, I didn't catch. There was a difference that. there, and the conversion was worth one. Wow. So that was something they were experimenting with. Just you know, they do differences in southern hemisphere and northern hemisphere. So here, thanks to our referees, verifying that 30-second limit. Now that was one of the, the recent the changes. Booth right next to us, so we can look at them for any help. And then the big difference too is that if there is a mall on the field, if you get a knee down, that becomes a ruck instantly. So th that situation can be used to your advantage. We don't see many long malls happen in the game of sevens, um, but it is something to bear in mind that is a little bit different coming into the summer of play. So we saw Adivis kick off to Atlantis. It's Atlantis with the ball, but it's Adivis with a lot of pressure and the referee calling touch.